So um, the easiest thing to do for that one is going to start be to start out by defining a uh, backup product. So if you come to uh, product management over on the left hand side here, um, you would build out a product definition uh, that's going to have um, your base retention, you know, the number of dailies that you want to keep. Um, and you can see I've already got one in here called All In 180, uh, which was built at my level. Uh, or you can come down and grab the All In and just clone that or duplicate that product. Um, everybody should have the All In in their standalone side. And um, you know, you'll see it's got this 28-day retention model. You want to change that to 180 days, 60, 90, whatever you choose. You'll want to create a new name up here for uh, the retention model. Um, check your other features here while you're in here. Do you, do you want to turn off certain functions here? Don't allow Exchange uh, on-premise backups or um, don't allow Windows 7 or Linux backups. If you choose, you can turn off various other options. But the predominant use of products is around uh, history limitation, uh, history limits uh, from a retention perspective. Once you've built that new product, go ahead and save that, okay? Um, and then we're going to assign that product, just like I was showing in the product assigning assignment uh, changes we made from a UI perspective. So um, now what I can do, uh, we'll back out of here um, and go uh, back to my product environment, back to my device environment. Hopefully it's taking a moment to load. So you can now come in here and select, you know, a handful of devices, um, use the new dialog like I was showing you uh, after next week. But as of right now, I would come in here and hit edit and I would change my product from the drop down. Or you can come in and select individual devices, go to the modification tab. Um, and you can change the uh, product here uh, on a per device basis to move it to something uh, that you've already defined at that particular uh, in customer or parent partner level. Um, that's going to give you base retention. Um, so 30, 60, 90, 180, whatever number of days that you like. Now, that's the short term side. If you want to keep end of month archives now or you want to do every uh, third Thursday uh, archiving, you can do that a couple ways. You can uh, come in here and grab an individual device. So I'll take this device right here and I'll launch the backup client. Um, and we're going to come in and set archiving just for this one device um, at a manual level. This would be great if you need to you know, set it for the owner's laptop or one device inside of an organization. I'll show you both methodologies here in a minute as well. Um, go to the preferences tab, come to the archiving section, and you're going to add a new archiving rule. Uh, we're going to do archiving. Uh, we're going to trigger this rule at midnight on the, the days in question. And that's going to mean the first backup that runs after midnight on whatever day I choose is going to be retained indefinitely as an archive. What data sources do I want to archive? Well, um, I want to archive file and folder and maybe my network shares backup, but I'll turn off the others. What months? Well, I want to keep these for uh, my January, um, my March, uh, my June, my September months if I if I want you know, to go maybe quarterly or something like that. Uh, or I can just say I want to do this for all months. Um, and then what day of the month? Okay, so I want to do uh, specific weekdays. So I want to do on the um, third Sunday. Or I can come in and say I want to do this on uh, the last uh, week. Uh, of the last Sunday of, of um, the month or on uh, Sunday every week if I want to and do a weekly archive point. Or if I come in here, I could say I want to do on certain days of the month. So I do the first, the 15th, the third, or the last day of the month to adjust for uh, leap years and so on. So lots of options. Make sure you do hit save. And once you've got this archive rule, um, you can come in and create a second or a third archive rule if you want to get very granular here uh, from an archiving perspective. Now, that's not going to work if you need to set this across 100 or 200 different devices. Um, what you would do if you wanted to do it in bulk um, is to come back into the management console. Um, so in a, a situation where you want to do or apply an archive rule to multiple devices, you could come in and select multiple devices and issue a remote command. Uh, come down here to uh, set backup archiving. And you can now build out that rule. Um, so I want to uh, clear a current archive rule. Choose my data sources, my name, my time, my months, my weeks, month days, month weeks, um, same type of configuration. Once you build that out here by simply um, uh, grabbing the base value and we'll do data sources all, uh, name, uh, end of month, uh, time is going to be 0100 for 1 a.m. Uh, we'll do uh, months for all months. And let's see, month day, uh, 
I will do uh, last. So once I've built a configuration like this, I can copy that and save it in my documentation system so I can use it later. And I would hit send to push out this remote command to uh, up to 200 devices at a time. If you want to get even further granular with this one, I have scripts that are available and automation policies that are available for RMM and for InCentral that you can deploy backups and set these archive rules and uh, bandwidth throttling and things at time of deployment so that you don't even have to touch this console. Turn it on automatically. Um, uh, can be done at any time, updated, reviewed, and modified. When it comes time to expiring them, uh, you can expire them individually and blow away individual archives, or you can come in and uh, run scripting across um, uh, hundreds of devices to say, expire anything over two years or three years or X number of months uh, of time to uh, purge those archives greater than uh, X period. Um, those There are some features and enhancements being discussed to add that into profiles so that you can choose uh, and define profiles up front with your archive and retention as the uh, base values and uh, make it a little bit more concise um, at the beginning. But for the most part, we can do it through scripting and automation.